Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Normally, I'm used to doing motivational speeches. Um, I hardly talk about the value of the work we do in media as Somalis around the world. Um, but today, it's such an honor to be here to support young people who want to bring change to their communities. And one of the reasons that I started the platform is for that reason. So I want to thank you guys so much for taking the initiative, for being proactive, and for seeing the need in your community. Let's give a round of applause to these young men and women who are doing amazing work. I always tell everyone, it's easy to think that something can be done, but to actually do it is the hardest part. So always support people in your communities who are actually doing the work. You know, Somali the wahad al badan nahay, but hol badan masamay no sahmaha. <laughs> so, alhamdulillah, um, I just want to say a few words. My first time in Africa, it's very strange to talk about this because I have been, I would say, qurbat too long. Um, over 30 years, my family has been living in the West. I left Somalia as practically a six-year-old. And my first time I ever came back to Africa was in Kenya in 2011. So it wasn't even Somalia my first time, but it's Kenya actually. And part of the reason I came back was I had um, I was working a corporate job, living a really amazing life, enjoying you know that nine to five corporate life where you're just making money, you're after the rat race, you're in the corporate world. And I had met one of my um, one of my cousins called me and she said, Hey, I'm having a wedding. Could you pick up somebody for me from the airport? And I had no idea who she was talking about. So I picked up this woman from the airport who was a very famous Somali singer. Of course, I was like, I never, I didn't know any Somali singers. And Lahiru Naharesu, her name was Sada Ali Warsame. And it was because of that one day of meeting someone who can change your life that I'm able to do this work today. That woman, the five minutes that I picked her up from the airport, taught me more about my heritage and said to me, how could you not even know anything about Somalia? You know, and she told me about her history, how she was a famous singer, all the political stuff she was involved in. And it made me start thinking, like, what, what, what part of life did we miss as Somalis in the West? You know, we didn't get any storytelling about our heritage. We didn't know the, hist the history behind why our country is the way it is today. So I wanted to start that gift for generations of children, including my own kids, so that one day they can look at themselves and be proud that they're Somali. And it doesn't matter what country in the world they're in. So that's why we're here today. And we came to the DAB together, me and Sada Ali. And it was that moment I realized how much media is needed in our community. I remember begging one of the TV stations here to support us and come and give advocacy to the thousands of Somalis that were dying from hunger. And this TV station said to me, you have to give us $1,000. <laughs> and that day I realized, I said, this is so unethical. Your people are dying and you don't want to cover the news. I mean, don't you want people to help your people? And that's when I said to myself, maybe that's where I could be of use in this world. So I started just changing my life. I went back to school, started building this platform a few years later. And this is where we are today. How can we change? the way media is in our society? How can we bring real, important programming that is needed by everyone in our community? Whether it's our language, whether it's, you know, what is going on in Somalia, 
all the stories that we are never told about our people who are living and surviving and thriving and sometimes their stories are never told so this is why we're here today and I hope that you you know all of you guys are here today because you're here for a reason and that reason could be you have some plans in your life to make a change for someone you have a desire to be better you have a desire to contribute and leave a legacy how hard is it these days for people to think like that very difficult it's very few people in the world but yet alone Somali society who will go above and beyond and be greater than just existing so I want you guys today to feel like you can be greater than anything that's been told about who we are, who we're going to be, and what's written for us. And I'm not talking about you making a million dollars. I'm talking about you leaving a name for your children, for your society, and for your people. So I hope that you join us on that journey today and hope that we have a good discussion. And I welcome all of you who are engaged and ready for change. Who is ready for change in this room? Let me hear you say yes. 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 I don't think that's change makers. Come on. Yes. Let me hear you say yes. yes. Stand up and tell the world right now you guys are ready for change in East Lee. Do you like the programming coming out of East Lee? No, right? Yes. Do you believe in change that you can do today for your community? Yes. Let me hear you say louder. Yes. Do you want change? Yes. Do you want change? Yes. I'm not hearing this side of the room. Come on, ladies. Okay, do you want change? Yes. Let me hear you say yes. yes. How could a woman with two children have more voice than all of you guys? Let's go. One more time. Are you ready for change? Yes. That's more like it. Let's start. How? ولكن <تصفيق> <تصفيق> Okay, so we are living in the biggest, fastest growing time of digital media. And I think as Somalis, we are very active online. Would you agree? We are some of the most active communities in terms of social media. But do we use it proactively in the correct way? Sometimes probably not. There's people that are making millions of dollars being on the internet doing business, but yet we are in chat rooms chatting and arguing about which politician is doing what today. Would you agree with that? So our young people with social media have to figure out how you know, to use it properly and proactively and how to use it for social activism. You know, it, the great thing about my platform that we built is very simple. Like, I didn't have a TV antenna. I started on TV in Canada. Then I realized the market was not really, you know, just Canada alone. Somalis in the diaspora are everywhere. Somalis want to connect. Somalis want to know who they are. So when we went on YouTube and we have over 5 million views and almost 50,000 subscribers, that's when I realized, my God, like, our television is not necessarily the platform to be on anymore. Everybody has a mobile phone. And you know, when I go to Somalia and I see an old man with his gel and he's like talking on the cell phone and he's scrolling through my YouTube channel, I'm just like, who needs television? So digital media now is impacting so much our community and we have an opportunity actually to lift a generation of young people out of poverty if we are able to create jobs in the digital world. 
So Somalis are, mashallah, some of the smartest, fastest learners. And if we can utilize those tools now to um, take it to the next notch is how do we use a digital age to earn income, to benefit ourselves, and to change our communities. And that's what the next step is. TV's dead, right? Yes. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us how you started Innovation TV? Um, Integration TV uh, started on Canadian television to tell Somali Canadian stories and basically share success stories of Somalis that are doing well. And then it expanded on to YouTube and that's where we kind of went to Sweden, we went to London, we, then I started going back to the journey of Africa. And that's when I realized more Somalis are actually interested about their heritage than they are just about the diaspora life. So that's how we kind of started the journey. How can we use the power of media to influence and change our community into the better way? So how many of you guys um, seen, like, you are very active in Eastleigh, would you agree? Yes? Um, how many of you guys are happy with the stories that come out of your community? Can I get a hand up? What, do you, what stories do you hear about Eastleigh? Are you guys happy with what you hear about East Lee in the international media? No? no? Yes? Yeah, we have. You, you have good stories? You have positive stories? What, what stories are coming out of East Lee that is like good or positive? No, East Lee. I'm talking about East Lee. So the question was, how do you use media to change your community? Very simple. We need young people in each community who are active on social media to start engaging and telling stories from their community. I'll be frankly honest with you. When I came to Eastleigh, since I've been, in, since I've been here, I haven't heard too many positive stories about the community. A lot of it has been investigations, things that are going on. But then I'm thinking, look at all these young people here tonight. There must be some successful young tech entrepreneurs. There must be some people who are building things, who are innovating, who are changing lives here. Would you agree? So where are those stories? Now it's up to you to tell those stories. And that's how media is being utilized across the world, is that young people are taking their cell phones and sharing their narrative. I would love to see a positive post every day about Eastleigh and what's happening here. Because the amount of money that comes in this community and the entrepreneurship that it has built should be told around the world. I was actually in Westlands the other night where I was speaking um, at another event I was attending. And it was a tech event where they're launching um, a, like an, a mentorship app for young people that are going to go to university when they graduate. They're looking for jobs in tech. And I said to the woman, uh, have you heard of East Lee? And she was like, no. She came from South Africa. She's never heard of East Lee. And she's launching this entrepreneurship platform to help young Africans you know, get jobs and learn training. And then I'm like, how come you haven't heard of the top entrepreneurship hub in East Africa, East Lee? And she's just like, because nobody's telling our story. So if we want opportunities in this community, if we want change in this community for young people, employment, we have to start engaging on the internet and start telling what Eastleigh is. I challenge you every day to post something positive about your community. I challenge you today.